Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to find a z-score using the TI-84 for specific areas. Um, for the first one what we have is we're looking for um, the first quartile. So we want to find the z-score that corresponds to the first quartile. With this, remember that a z-score means that it's the standard normal model, which tells us that our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. So anytime you're looking for a z-score, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. We're looking for the first quartile, and the first quartile, if you remember what that means, it means 25% of the area is to the left of this value. Okay, um, so first quartile means 25% of the area, or an area of 0.25 is going to be to the left of that. This is going to give us a negative z-score because of the fact that it is below the mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our calculator to help us find that. And what we're going to use is we're going to use inverse norm. And the parameters that you need in order to put it in is you have to know the area, which would be our 0.25, the mean, which we would use 0, and the standard deviation, which we would use 1. So this is what we're going to input into our calculator. Z is equal to the inverse norm of 0.25 comma 0 comma 1. And for some of you, when you use this calculator and you go into there, um, it will give you a screen or a menu that tells you to put in the area. Some of you will not have that on your calculators. So what I'm going to do is hit second distribution. So the VARS button right here above it has distributions. And option three is inverse norm. And my screen pulls up an area, so it tells me what is the area, and that would be the 0.25. Area always has to be between zero and one. And then we would just hit enter. And some of you have older calculators or calculators that don't have that menu, so this is what it would look like, inverse norm, 0.25. The comma button is right here above the seven, so you would just put it in exactly like it appears here. And then when you hit enter, you get negative 0.6744. Okay, so this is approximately negative 0.6744. Four, five. if I round it. Most of the time with z-scores, we only go to two decimal places, so we could put that this is negative 0.67, because most of the time if you're using a table, um, that's how many places that you'd be able to find it to. It's close to negative 0.67. For the top tenth percentile, you do have to be careful on this one. Um, for this one, because we're looking for the top tenth, we're looking for this area up here. We're looking for an area of 10%. And in your graphing calculator, your graphing calculator, when you put it in, the area has to be the area to the left. Okay, um, it will only find it if you give it area to the left. So. What we want to do is you can either do 1 minus 0 0.10 to get this area to the left, which is 0 0.9, or if it's a complicated one, this one's really easy to do, um, you could do 1 minus 0 0.10. So I'll show you that you can put it in either way. So this would be 0 0.901, and then we would go and plug this into our calculator. So if we grab our calculator, second the VARS button, it says distributions, and we're going to choose option three. Our area for this one, it, you can actually type in 1 minus 0.1 if you didn't want to do the math. For this one, it wasn't hard, so you could easily um, put it in, and you get 1.28155. If you don't want to keep doing the second um, VARS, you can always grab it, and then you can just change it to so if I wanted to, I could just change this to 0 0.90. And notice it gives me the same thing. So you can either put it in as 1 minus the area for area to the right, or you can put it in as um, already finding the difference. So with this one, I'm just going to round it to two decimal places. So Z is approximately 1.28. The last one that I'm going to discuss with you is when it's between. For this one, it's saying that I have two z-scores. 
I want them to be opposites of each other. So I want there to be an area of 84% in between. So I'm looking for a negative Z here and a Z here. So we're trying to figure out which Z scores have an area between them and we want them to be equal. So what we have to do is remember that we need our area to the left. So we can either do the area to the left of the negative Z or we can do the area to the left of the positive Z. Um, both of them will give us a Z score and then we just remember that we have to report both signs. So for this one, remember that 100% of our area has to fall in between or underneath the standard normal curve. So if I do 1 minus 0.84, I get 0.16 on the outside. And then half of it has to be here, and half of it has to be here. So anytime it asks you to find negative Z and Z, that means that it's the area on the outside is what you have to find, and it's always half of 1 minus the area between. Okay, so this tail here is always half of one minus area between. So in your calculator, if I want the negative z-score, this one will give us our negative. Um, we would do inverse norm 0 0.0801. Okay, and if you want your positive z-score, you would do inverse norm and from here all the way from negative infinity up to here, we would have 92% of our area. So I would put in 0 0.9201. So let me show you how to plug that into your graphing calculator. You can decide which one you want to use. They're always going to be the opposites. So second distributions, option three. And I'm going to do the 0 0.08 first. Okay, and so we end up with negative 1.405. When the middle or the third decimal is a five, a lot of times it's best to report it as three decimal places. So I'm gonna go ahead and report this one as three decimal places, um, but you don't always have to do that. Again, if you wanted to, instead of doing the second vars, you can always grab and then just go through and change it. So just to show you that I would have got the same thing by doing this, except for the sign is opposite. Um, if I do the inverse norm 0.9201. So let me go ahead and write those down. So this would be negative 1.405, and this one would be positive 1.405. So those would be your two z-scores. So with this, just to recap, remember that to get to the inverse norm, it's second vars, and then you would choose option three, inverse norm, and you have to know the area, the mean, and the standard deviation. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to check out all of the other video content that I have.